Flying through the sky, here's your look at the new NECA Toys Crash Bandicoot with Jetpack. Crash Bandicoot is back. The eagerly anticipated action figure line from NECA features Crash Bandicoot as you know and love him. Your favorite marsupial has plenty of articulation for maximum wumps, and this version of Crash includes his space trekking jetpack. Relive all your favorite Crash moments and get ready to put some ump in your wump. Oh, but the first thing we do is figure out how tall Crash Bandicoot stands. I'm going to take the Ultra Measuretron 5000, haha, <laughs> that's what I call it, and I'm going to put it to the very top of his hair, stopping it right there. Oh, I just rhymed, and apparently I didn't know it. 6.3 inches, 6.3 inches from his feet to the top of his hair, right where my finger is, right there. I did it again. And to find out what that is in centimeters, just simply a case of swapping that over in metrics, you're looking at 16 centimeters exactly. For the figure's accessories, what you see is what you get. Immediately getting them out of box, there's no assembly that's required, nor is there other accessories. Everything is already packed on the back of Crash Bandicoot via this giant rocket, this rocket jetpack that is housed on the back of his torso. In theory, you can actually remove it. This is tricky and not something I would really recommend, but I just want to show you, I'm only going to drop it past his shoulders just to show you that it doesn't seem to be attached to his torso. See, there's no connecting points, there's nothing attaching it to its torso, which I guess in theory means that you could slide this down. The problem with that is it's going to get past his very rather large shoes and then you're going to have to reverse the process to get it back over on top of his torso. So I'm going to leave it off, leave off the removing of the jetpack that is, and I'm just going to leave it in place. I'm curious as to why they actually didn't peg it into his back either. I mean, it does sit a little on the loose side. Not to say that you're going to be picking up a figure and doing this all the time. Maybe you like doing that. I, 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 I don't know. Maybe you do. But, uh, you know, it is, it is slightly loose, being that it's literally just strapped to him like a normal jetpack would. You know, for people that own jetpacks. Oh, I would love to have a jetpack. Uh, but the jetpack looks fantastic. It's a nice silver has been added primarily to most of the jetpack. And then you've got almost like hazard yellow and alternating black. So it kind of looks like a bumblebee, just a colony of bumblebees making up the top half of it. You've got a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, a little bit of purple, and a little bit of silver all kind of making up the middle area here. And then you've got a continuation of the bumblebee colors down below. Down below, they've also airbrushed what looks to be the start of some exhaust or fire that's going to be coming out from the jetpack. I do like that, that it does look like it's technically in use. Ooh! No, it's not. It's, it's, it's not hot. I shouldn't even joke about that. No, it's it's not hot. It's just painted. It's just painted in there. I was being a silly guy. Just a silly, silly guy. Uh, but he does look great. I mean, this is a Crash Bandicoot line that I have been asking for since, well, Crash Bandicoot first came out to consoles. Uh, NECA finally is really the right company to be helming this franchise, if you will, because I think they're doing a really bang up job on this guy. Now, so far, one thing I did notice, and I had to do a little bit of maintenance, I had to go in and do some repairing, is that when I got him out of packaging, I don't even know if you saw it at the beginning when the packaging was shown in this video, but he was missing his nose. Now everybody is going to be frantically rewinding this video back to the beginning to see whether he was actually missing his nose. He was. The nose was at the bottom of the clamshell case. I took a little bit of glue and a little bit of patience and a little bit of love and care and I glued the nose back into place. It probably was just just the way it was assembled in the plant. I happened to be lucky enough that my nose was off. Well, not my nose. 
his nose. Speaking of nose and continuing away from his nose, fantastic looking head sculpt. Of course, he's got his aviator goggles on there, complete with aviator sort of hats, even though it's made open for the side areas of his ears and his hair. Of course, we don't want to mess up his hair to stick out. Um, he doesn't seem to have, or if he does have, you can't really move it all that much. Those ball jointed uh, eyebrows, famous for this line. I think they have removed them altogether in favor of just pegging them into place. I mean, you really couldn't move them anyway, so it doesn't really make much sense why they would keep that feature, as it really was a marketed feature for the other Crash Bandicoot figures. Basically, from like the waist down, a lot of carryover is done here for Crash. His arms, his torso, and of course his legs look like they're reuses from previous Crash Bandicoot figures. The head sculpt is what looks obviously as brand new. Very large smile was present on this figure that wasn't present on the other figures. Love the fact that each of the head sculpts are unique to one another. Simply not just ring a ling a linging, phoning it in. Hey, hi, we're NECA. We're just going to keep reusing the same mold. No, 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 no. NECA doesn't do that. NECA reuse a br brand new head sculpts, even though like the body, same. Samesies, samesies, brand new head sculpt, liking that. The fur, as good as it always has been, the nice transition of lighter yellowish oranges to a more warmer tanned orange present here on the arms. The arms look very furry, as good as they did on all the other Crash Bandicoot figures, looking just as good on this figure as well. Of course, you've got the, the shoes there, done in a nice color of red, kind of a dark red, and then a further darker cranberry here and they've even banded the bottom here of his under treads. He's got peg holes on the undersides of his feet, but as you could probably guess it, he doesn't come with a display stand. That's okay, I'm not, I'm not upset by that. Uh, I really do digging, the, I like this figure. I might even say, I'm just trying to like go in the back of my mind. I'm flipping the pages in my mind. I'm actually thinking this might be my favorite Crash Bandicoot. I know again, purists would probably go and gravitate towards just the original recipe and not extra spicy and not extra crispy, but like the original recipe, Crash Bandicoot is their personal favorites because there's nothing on him other than just Crash and all Crash and all day long. But this one I do really like. I like the head sculpt. I like the big smile on him. The jetpack obviously is a very nice touch. Uh, it is, again, something that looks like it can be removable. I'm not going to personally take the time to try to remove it and then curse and frustrate as I try to put the backpack, the jetpack, back on him. So I'm just going to probably likely leave it as is. Because, I mean, I've got the other Crash Bandicoot figures. I don't need the need. I don't have the need to want to take this off. Okay, so let's have a look at this posability. So his head is still on that ball joint that we looked at before. Love the aviator goggles. That's my favorite, one of my favorite aspects of this figure and the big smile. Just keep kind of veering off my topic of interest and keep going back to the head sculpt. But yeah, like I said, his head is on a ball joint, same as it was before. Of course, with that, you're getting a little bit more limitation to it. I mean, the move, the head moves up, the head moves down. You can move the head left and right. So I guess it's not restricted by the fact that he's got the straps on the sides of his shoulders. The straps are notorious though, as you probably are so far seeing, as sliding down his arms. Another reason why I kind of wish that this was just pegged into place so that it didn't have to necessarily be removable and it would guarantee as well that the straps hopefully wouldn't be moving around on you. So the arms move out. That seems logical, doesn't it? They also move forward. They also move back. He has a bend at the elbow, which also allows the forearm to rotate and also allows the hands to rotate as well. Those hands are also independently hinges. So you can see there's the hinge right there. The hand moves back and forth along that track, like a little choo-choo train going into town. Upper torso is on a ball joint. Now this is kind of where you get a little bit more limitations happening. You can't quite get your hand in there to move things properly. And even if you did, what, what moving are you really gonna be doing? At the very least, I guess you can rotate the waist side to side, but that's about all you're really gonna be able to get from it. The legs split, the legs go forward, the legs go back. He does also have a swivel happening right here at the leg. And if you can see it right there, there's a hinge. There's that little choo-choo train. He's moved on to a different track. You can bend the legs back and forth, which I find is not always the easiest thing to do. I always feel like I'm going to be breaking the leg than doing anything else. But you can see that you can bend the leg back. 
The feet are on a very, very generous ball joint. So you can move them back and forth, up and down, ankle pivot back and forth also. I'm sure I don't have to tell you, but if I wasn't going to tell you, I wouldn't be doing my job. So I'm going to tell you that it goes without saying, being that he has a backpack, a jet pack on his back, and he splits, that the figure is a little top heavy. Luckily, he's got large enough feet that seems to offset for the fact that he has a little bit more top heaviness happening in the upper torso. The figure generally, generally stays upright. Sometimes he does veer off, as he would with a jetpack anyways, and he does topple over. But if providing you get the feet firmly planted, as I've done right now, the figure is A-OK. -okay. A-OK. -okay. When the time comes to pick up a new NECA figure, I always feel like I'm in for a treat. There's something about NECA releases that I feel they're in a completely different category than other toy companies. In fact, often at times, if somebody says and calls a NECA release a toy, I feel compelled to correct them. It's not a toy, it's a collectible or a figurine. There's definitely a difference, there's a separation when you look at the two types of categories of figures. You get the retail mass-released figure lines that are, you can tell, just phoning it in, reusing as many molds as they possibly can, and sloppy paints, sloppy sculpts, and often at times the figures look incomplete. NECA, by contrast to that, and I understand that you're paying a lot more for a NECA release than you would a retail released, mass market released uh, toy line, but for NECA, what you pay into it is what you get back for a really outstanding collectible. Crash Bandicoot, for example, and the reason why I say all of that if Crash Bandicoot, like I said, had been given to another toy company, I don't think it would be done this, the true service that NECA is doing to this line right now. All these sculpts are beautiful. And to go with that, to boot, all the figures are fully posable. Crash is a little bit more limited than, say, the likes of some of their other figure lines like Michael Myers. I know that's probably not the best example to compare it to. But Crash Bandicoot, when you get these figures and you get them out of packaging, you feel like you're looking at art. And this crash here is no exception. NECA really is the best toy company to be handling a Crash Bandicoot lineup. And so far, I'm very happy with all the stuff that I've been seeing from them. As you could probably guess it, I've reviewed all of the Crash Bandicoots. I think there's only one that I might be missing. And that's probably in the, the scuba outfit crash, which I don't think is actually out yet. But in the meantime, I've had to look at all the other ones in the meantime. And these are nostalgic for me. Not necessarily the time frame in which they were released, because these are new releases. But when I look at them, I feel like I'm looking at something that I would have wanted when I was a child. We just never had these when I was a kid, or at the very least when Crash came out. I wasn't necessarily a child at that time. But really, I'm happy with what they're doing. And I can't wait to see what NECA has in store for us for future Crash Bandicoot releases. Good news though, muchachos. If you're interested in picking this one up for yourself, Crash Bandicoot with his jetpack is available now in retail stores and comic book stores alike. Today we were having a look at the brand new NECA Toys Crash Bandicoot. This was Crash with his jetpack. A very cool looking figure. Want to go back and have a look at some of my other NECA reviews? There's a whole playlist just for that. And make sure if you're new to this channel, you hit that little subscribe button down below because more videos will be coming soon. Stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.